Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm bringing you guys my team strategies for Hockey Ultimate Team. Uh, so I get asked this a lot on my channel, and I thought, you know what, it's about time that I update the team strategy so you guys can kind of watch, and uh, hopefully you guys can learn something from this as well. So, uh, just a quick disclaimer, I get told on my old video at least, my old team strategies, like, oh, they don't work, or something along the lines of that. And if, say, you're a Division 5 or 4 player, uh, don't expect these strategies to propel you to being a Division 1 player. It takes a lot of skill to be in that division. And if you watch the gameplay in Hut Roulette, even I have to try extremely hard to win these games with a pretty good team. So, I mean, if you're a Division 2 player and you want to be a Division 1 player, these strategies could help you for sure. Uh, but really practice with your poke checks, with your stick lifts, uh, try not to take too many stupid penalties and uh, take your players out of position. You just want to be very observant of your gameplay as well. And I highly recommend if you're having trouble scoring as well, uh, going to practice mode and practice the basics, like practice um, breakaways, practice shooting the puck, and just find ways to score goals or else uh, when you are playing in game, uh, you won't be ready. It's just like practicing any type of sport or anything. If you aren't um, used to scoring goals or if you haven't practiced a lot uh, you'll see it in your gameplay and other players that have practiced more than you will have the upper hand on you so I suggest you definitely practice a little bit before you get into like the higher divisions so that's just a quick disclaimer I uh, just want to tell you guys that these strategies won't help you be a better player it's just to help uh, kind of facilitate your gameplay in a way that you might want to uh, play it, it makes your players more offensive uh, it definitely helps your players get in position a lot so uh, I will show you the team strategies and I will go through a quick run through of them uh, I'll just go through the left trigger and go through all of them nice and quickly before I even show you the video for the people that only want to watch this video for a minute and just want to get on with their day so here you go there's the team strategies that I use uh, for hut roulette at least four lines uh, forward line two and you can see that not much of a change in each one i keep them pretty consistent but um defensive pairings as well i'll quickly go through them and you guys can pretty much copy it if you like and really it really depends on your gameplay as well if say something is not working for you with these strategies don't be afraid to like manipulate them to your way like i play differently than you play and say if you have no problems with uh, point shots and you're great with blocking the puck maybe you might, might want to swap it down to say collapsing or something like that so it really is up to you uh, i just use these strategies because i find that in division one um the, i'm more comfortable playing with these than some other strategies all right, so now that I kind of ran through the strategies, I mean, you can pause the video anytime you want just to kind of copy them, but uh, now I'll kind of be explaining how these strategies work and kind of telling you guys how you can change these around as well. These strategies are definitely not set in stone. It's just what I use. I'm going to be telling you if you play it differently than I do, I can give you some pointers on which ones to pick uh, so you aren't left out in the dark just with these strategies, right? I, I can probably just show you the... Um, I keep saying strategies, but like I could go through them and like in 10 seconds you can copy them and they won't necessarily work and you might not necessarily necessarily know why as well. So I will be going through them. So four check first of all, I always set it on one two two aggressive. I want my guys always four checking. I don't know about you guys, but if you're great with intercepting pucks, you could change it. But every single year from NHL 13, 14, 15, 16, uh, I've stuck to one two two aggressive, and it's always been successful for me. So I highly recommend you try that out. All right, so moving on to neutral zone, I put it on one four, and you might be wondering why. Like, oh, is that a trap formation? Like, am I doing the uh, skill zone, but I actually am not. Uh, most of the time, I like to have three guys back at all times. So usually if I get one guy to go forward, I can maybe use the second guy to kind of gauge where he's passing the puck or where he's trying to skate towards, and I can kind of already predict where he's going. And that 1-4 definitely puts a little bit of pressure on him. And I find with any other strategy, you get really caught out of position most of the time, especially like 1-2-2 red and all those other ones, like 1-2-2 blue. Unless you can really work it and you really don't have problems with it, you can go ahead and change it to whatever you like. But 1-4 is always been successful to me. And it really is just kind of predicting what your opponent is doing and then kind of going to that position, getting ready for the poke check, getting ready for the hit. Even though I don't hit that off in the game, I kind of stick to just poke checking and just trying to be as precise as possible. And by precise, I should elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, just try to practice your poke checking and your stick lifting. Try to not get penalties and really practice just getting stick on stick action. So if you aren't confident with that, you can go into uh, practice mode or you can go into single player mode and try practicing on the computers and just try to avoid uh, sticking your stick in between their legs or something like that. Uh, you only want to use the poke check 
when, you know, when a player is really coming close to you and you have that chance and opportunity and you're confident, 100% confident that you can poke check their puck off their stick. Uh, other than that, you can, um, you just want to follow along with them for the most part. I should bring you guys like how to play a defense video or play an offense video, but this is more of just a strategies video, so I won't go through it too in depth. I might just kind of go, th I might make a video like that. You guys can let me know if you would want to watch a how to play defense video, but uh, that is basically what I like. 1 4, definitely a long uh, elaboration on the neutral zone, but going on to the trap and four check. I see a lot of people put the trap and four check on like the middle or somewhere above. I honestly liked my guys for checking all the time. I like to put the pressure on my opponent and most of the time I let my two guys skate right to the person with the puck and I usually bring my other guy back and you can watch him a lot of my hot roulette episodes. I, I'm not the one attacking usually. I let my um, my computers do most of the attacking. I kind of sit back like a centerman and just kind of predict where the passes are going and most of the time the, the AI does a better job at forechecking than I do. Like, he, they can uh, pin the players on the boards very easily. Uh, they don't get too many penalties. Their discipline, most of the time, is very, very good. So you can rely on your AI most of the time. Honestly, if you haven't played NHL 16 that much, and say you play older versions of NHL, uh, you'll find that, oh, most of the time, the AI is very stupid. But uh, this year, I feel like the AI has definitely improved for sure. And this kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with offensive pressure as well. So I put it on full attack. I just have two guys going right at them, no matter what. Just having, uh, just having some pressure on him all the time, and having one guy back is always the best way I like to attack. And then going on to defensive pressure. So this is kind of relative to how you play. Uh, for the most part, I kind of struggle the most with uh, cross creasers. So having a centerman always kind of in that zone uh, definitely increases my chances of getting intercepting that pass at least, and not giving them the chance of doing uh, cross crease. But for the most part, it does still happen. Uh, you know, you gotta practice as well, just like I do. I have to keep practicing on my interceptions. But uh, there's definitely different strategies you can use to intercept the puck. Like you can hold down left bumper. I think that'll put uh, make your guy put one hand on the stick and put it on the ice so they can't pass it along the ice. Uh, there's also the dive, which is left bumper and right bumper. That's a little bit uh, dangerous of a play. If he's skating straight to the net and you do that uh, dive, it's very likely that they're going to go right over top of your body and you'll get a penalty for sure, like a tripping penalty. So it really depends on the... Uh, I guess um, the situation, you want to be using the left bumper and right bumper in specific occasions, so you definitely want to practice that as well. And for the most part, I don't like to have it on protect the net or high pressure. High pressure is like, um, I find that my AI, I, I rely a lot on my AI to kind of put the pressure on the player and I kind of sit back and just kind of watch where the player is going, my opponent is going. And I find the high pressure is a little bit too, too high, I guess. Uh, if it gets your players a lot out of position, I find that contained puck is the best one. So I just kind of want to elaborate on that uh, defensive pressure. Also, defensive strategy is also up to you. Um, I find that you have to change this a lot in game. It's one of the ones that I always change because uh, it really depends on your opponent. If he likes to circle around your zone in the half boards and um, they like to just circle around, wait for that cross crease, tight point is definitely not the best one. You might want to switch it to collapsing because as you can see by the description, players collapse to the front of the net and slot. And uh, this is definitely the best if, say, people are constantly doing cross creasers. And sometimes I do have to switch back to collapsing. But for the most part, I see a lot of people using their defense more uh, nowadays. So uh, just using the type point just negates most of the defenders. Even though it's not 100% perfect, it works like 80 or 90% of the time. Cuts off the passes to defenders. I really highly recommend you use type point. And going on to penalty kill. So this is also very relative as well to how your opponent is playing. Uh, but I change this a lot in game as well. So sometimes uh, I will put it to say passive box if say uh, that player is just really good with stick handling and just wants to get in my zone. Uh, passive box just creates that type box in the defensive zone like it says in the team strategies. But for the most part, I like to have it a large box. Have my AI kind of uh, going after the guy and I'll kind of get into like a triangle formation in my uh, zone, I guess, in my defensive zone and kind of just block off any shots and then just kind of try my best to get the puck out. It's just, it's very dangerous if they get shots on net this year. The AI is so good at tipping pucks and getting those garbage goals that you just don't want the shot even on net. So large box is kind of to put pressure on the guy to get the shot on net. And as long as you play well defensively, try to be a good centerman for the most part, uh, you will find some success with large box. Okay, so moving on to power play and power play carry and dump. Um, I usually like to have it on overload since 
NHL 13 all the way till now, I've always had it on overload, and I haven't had any problems with it, and I've always been in Division 1 as well, so I definitely recommend just to stick with overload. Power play, carry, and dump, really, I think it is situational. I don't think there's a need to put it on higher or lower. Uh, just put it down the middle, and I find that your players get in position most of the time, depending on what you're doing with the puck. So, anyways, that is the team strategies. Let's go ahead and go into the forward lines now, and I'll kind of explain to you uh, my thinking process behind all these strategies okay so as you guys probably already saw i have all my lines on overload from forward line one all the way to four they're all all on overload even though i don't know why and hut even when you set it on overload the third line and the fourth line are set on crash the net and behind the net and i don't know why i like it's always like that uh but i'll, I'll kind of talk to ea and see if they can implement a fix for that it's been such a long time since this problem has like been here and I'm pretty sure they've already heard about it and I just kind of will talk to them about it next time I meet them so uh, I have them all in overload and now we'll go into carry and uh, cycle okay so most of the time I just have it just below half a bar and you probably would see that for every single line but I just have it a little bit less than half I find that I like to carry and cycle the puck a lot in this game. You definitely want to try practicing that as well. Having your guy on the left board, you know, skate up. And if you're running in a room, just hold that right trigger. Always hold that right trigger. And then just get ready to dump the puck and let it swing around the boards to the other a winger. And most of the time, that winger is always there. Just having it like this, I find a lot of success with that. And it's a very useful strategy just to get the puck in and not like fiddle around with it in the neutral zone. Because that is the most dangerous area to lose the puck. If you lose the puck there, uh, you can, you're can you just asking for like a breakaway to be scored on you or something like that. So having just halfway and being smart with your dump-ins and chases, it, it really is a major part in this game, especially in NHL 16. I see a lot of other YouTubers kind of make that mistake where uh, they don't dump the puck in and, and instead they get a poke check on them and then suddenly there's a three on two on them. And uh, so... But pretty much really practice getting the puck in and having like a retrieval strategy. It's actually a thing. It's called puck retrieval strategy. You'll hear like a lot of like, uh, I guess NHL players say, oh, we'll get the pucks deep and get pucks to the net. It's actually a thing. I mean, uh, I remember back when I used to play hockey. I played hockey for about 13, 14 years. Pretty high level. I wouldn't say like uh, AAA or AA or some type of hockey like that, but... Um, I, I used to be a centerman most of the time and my coach would dump the puck in and my wingers would do most of the work in terms of trying to angle the, uh, the defenders off and, and I would basically just be the guy just trying to cut off the passes, right? And it really is that you want to practice angling your opponents off and predicting where they're passing in order to get the puck and then just getting the puck on net. That's basically what the offensive puck retrieval strategies is. And it pretty much is the same for defense as well. Um, obviously, it's a little bit different. It's a breakout type of strategy where you want to use the boards as much as often. Uh, you don't want to practice like... Uh, you want to avoid, at least, uh, pushing the puck up the middle. Try your best to sauce the puck. Use a saucer pass right bumper across the boards. And most of the time, you'll get the puck out with a higher success rate. All right, so I'm butchering up my sentences a little bit. I apologize about that, but this is probably like the 15th take I've done this video trying to kind of explain and elaborate my strategies a little bit because I don't talk about them too often. I just kind of play the game. Uh, but going into efficiency and energy, I found that in NHL uh, 16, in the beginning of the game, uh, this uh, the energy level is just depleted so fast. By the end of like the first period, all your guys will be red barred. They will be so tired. And, but they did put in some new tuner sets to change that, in my opinion. Now, most of the time, when I finish a period, uh, there's at least two lines that are in the green bars and maybe, like, two lines in the yellow bars. It really depends on the opponent I'm facing. But um, most of the time, I like to have my energy set pretty high for my first and second lines, just trying to get them to skate a little bit faster. And it really does help with the offensive checking, uh, offensive forechecking uh, to get that puck. So these all kind of go hand-in-hand hand with my thinking process, I guess. And most of the time... You'll see on all my forward lines, I like to block the puck. Like I said, I like to have my guys uh, four check while I sit back. And if I can block the puck as much as possible, that is always a bonus. So I don't always, I just find that if you get your puck too close to your net, it is just a very dangerous play. So just getting that puck blocked is always a good thing. So now talking about that, I can go a little bit quicker in my forward line two, three, and fours. But you can see they're pretty much the same for carrying dump and cycle for that one. Uh, energy level is set just a little bit lower, block just set a little bit higher, 
Uh, for line of three, you can see that efficiency and energy level, it's set a little bit more on efficient. It really depends on your lineups, but for the most part, having your third line and fourth line a little bit more efficient is a little bit better because it. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have your third or fourth line centers uh, definitely doing the penalty killing. So having your guys always with energy on the third and fourth line, it's always a bonus. Uh, having it on fully blocked, uh, that's what I like to do. And on the fourth line, just in case if I need a penalty kill done, and um, you know what, for those scary moments where my guys are all red barred, always my fourth line has a little bit of energy left, a little bit of juice in the tank. So having that efficiency level just a little bit lower is always nice, as well as just blocking the puck. Okay, so going on to my defensive pairings, and these are kind of important, I guess, but for the most part, you don't want to set too big of a bias on hold the line or pinch, even though I have it one slider above the halfway mark to pinching the puck. So the reason why I like to have it a little bit higher on pinch is because I want my defenders to go for the hit. And you might be wondering, like, why would you want your defender to go for the hit? But um, for the most part, they are very, very accurate uh, with your hit. And if you're very smart with angling your guys, uh, your opponent off to the boards or something like that with two players, uh, I like to have my defender kind of go in for the hit while I kind of give him backup. And that's the way I like to play. I like to have my defenders kind of do most of the defending for me and then I find I get the puck a lot more than if I were to go for the hit myself or if say I were to uh, poke check the puck myself because I find that I get my stick into their skates a lot. And you'll see this a lot in, uh, for my hut roulette at least. Uh, how I play. Most of the time I get beat on the snipes because I, I switch to my other defender trying to poke check the puck, get my other defender kind of to do the most of the defending for me and I sometimes get beat by that. So I still have to practice a little bit on that but for the most part I like to have it a little bit more higher on pinch. Also on cycle I like to have it just a little bit lower. Like I said I like to have my defenders ready to cycle the puck rather than shoot uh, and even that uh, I like to have my guys in position and for the most part uh, my defenders are always ready to shoot the puck anyways, you know, like there's never a chance where my guy is like, oh, my guy, my uh, right defender is up on the right boards and, you know, he's trying to cycle the puck, but he can't shoot it. For the most part, the defenders are very smart. They don't get out of position most of the time. So I like to have it biased more on cycle rather than shoot. And this really is similar to all my other defender pairings. So uh, I'll go through them, but it's not too much variation between all of them. As you guys can see, most of the time it is on cycle, but uh, that is pretty much it for this team strategies video. I know it is very long, but I bet you that if you watch this video all the way, uh, you'll find a lot of good information that you guys can scavenge for yourselves and use in your own Hockey Ultimate Team strategy. So uh, that is pretty much it for this video. Like I said, if there's anything I'm missing, uh, don't be afraid to post it in the comment box below because definitely I miss stuff all the time. My memory is just, like shot sometimes. So uh, don't be afraid to post any questions in the comments as well as let me know what other type of videos that you want me to post that can help you with your gameplay. I know some people want wanted me to post like a defensive video, how to play defense, how to play offense, how to score some goals. So... Uh, you guys can let me know uh, what you want to see so I can focus more of my effort on that video. But that is pretty much it for this video. Like I said as well, one more thing. Practice, practice, practice. All right. If you are a Division 4 player, it will take you probably 50 games to be at least a Division 3 player. Probably another 50 games to be a Division 2 player. And probably like 200 games to be a Division 1 player. Honestly, uh, Division 1 has all of the best players, right? There's no higher division than that, so... Uh, I can imagine some people are struggling with it, and I am struggling with it myself, although I am doing pretty well in the season. I mean, I am, uh, what, five points in, and most of the time I win the Division One title most of the time. I never get regulated from it unless I'm doing, like, a pack squad series with a bronze team, and I get beat, like, that way. So, that is pretty much it for this video. I'm going to end it here. 20 minutes, way too long. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave it a like if you did enjoy this type of video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Redeem yourself. I mean, these are just horrible. Alright, next one. Oh, okay, okay. It's not a flash forward card. I, I got a little overexcited there, but our pack one is actually insane right now. Thompson's card. I will definitely take that.